Today, we're taking a look at the top 10 Android apps for September of 2025. It's kind of crazy, summer's already over. The only thing I'm kind of excited for is all these phone releases. We got the iPhone up next. I just recently did my first impressions on the Pixel 10 Pro. And I'm also doing a day in the life, which is coming out in the next few days. Super excited for that. You guys are definitely gonna enjoy that. So one of the main deal breakers when people are moving from the iPhone over to like the Pixel or Android in general, is there's no iMessage. And I know a lot of people use WhatsApp, but for those people who still want iMessage, you should check out the first app called Open Bubbles. So all you need to do to make this work is literally download it on your Android phone. It's even in the Play Store, so no sideloading needed. Then you need to download a piece of software on your Mac. You only need it for a few minutes. You just need to scan a QR code on your Mac and then log into iCloud. Basically, it's just mimicking the certification keys that your Mac is using whenever you send iMessage. And so your Pixel or your Android phone is basically just pretending to be your Mac whenever you send a message. Something else which is pretty cool, whenever you're in a chat, you can actually press this little video icon in the top right and actually start a FaceTime call. So there's no more being left out from your iPhone friends. Something pretty crazy is the UI looks exactly like on the iPhone, even jumping in the settings, all the icons, they look very iOS. And when people share their iCloud albums with your email, you can even access it inside of here. There's actually a ton of things you can change in here. You can make it look like the Samsung messaging app. You can give it a material U interface, and you can also tweak all the colors and give people avatars and even change the refresh rate in here. So yeah, you can even download the iOS emoji font, which is crazy. So you can even get iOS emoji. So yeah, I know a lot of people don't need this stuff, but if you want it, then this is how you can get it. Number two on the list is called material capsule. And this is a way of getting a similar interface to Dynamic Island, so you can get some nice little functionality from the hole punch cutout on most of your phones. So when you're playing music in any app, Spotify, Apple Music, whatever you use, it will then show up at the top in this pill cutout, and you can actually hold down to expand it and get some media controls. And something nice is it actually looks like material use, so it really fits in with you know the Android experience. And you can also go ahead and control a flashlight in here. So whenever you have the flash on, you can just hold down and you can actually go ahead and change the brightness. So one thing I just hate on the Pixel is there's no way of changing the flash brightness directly inside the control center. So now you have that on your Pixel. So number three is Photoshop. And I know a lot of people are probably thinking like this isn't new, but Photoshop has always been kind of a mess when it comes to mobile apps. Previously, they had a bunch of different Photoshop apps and all of them did different things. And it wasn't the true Photoshop experience that you would have on like desktop. And so now they've combined all the tools and all the AI from Firefly and they put it into one single app. And this Photoshop app is built from the ground up to work on Android. It's intuitive, it's optimized, it offers layering, masking, selection, spot healing tools, blend tools, and there's free access right now while it's still in beta. So download it, give it a try. So the Pixel 10 Pro is all about AI. There's a lot of AI tools built throughout this phone, and that is all from Gemini. But there's so many different tools out there right now. You have ChatGPT, Claude, and even Microsoft Copilot. And it can get overwhelming, even with just third-party apps. There's so many different AI apps you need to install. And so Cortex is the app up next. And this one actually brings all of those tools under one single app. So inside of here on the main screen, you can select which AI you wanna use. You can use ChatGPT or even Codestral, Command, DeepSeek, Gemini, and even Gemma. I haven't heard of that one, which is by Google. Now it is limited how much you can use this because there's credits and I only have 200 right now. So if you want, you can pay for more credits or there is free ways of getting extras as well. This app also has an offline mode so you can actually install local models and create your own. If you click on create in the top right, you can actually create your own AI assistant, define its personality and all the knowledge that it has. And in this inbox section, it will have all your different chat logs with the different AIs together. This app's completely open source and transparent is licensed under Apache 2 and you can even take a look at the code on GitHub. Number five is called screen stream. So this is a way of casting your screen to any web browser. When you're inside the app, you can select the stream mode that you want to go for. So you can even choose WebRTC. You can enable device audio as well as the microphone, and then you can just go ahead and start the stream, type it in your web browser, and you can go ahead and watch it in real time. So this might be useful if you want to teach someone something, show something on a big screen, maybe in a classroom. But yeah, completely free. So go check it out. One thing I really like about the new version of Android 16 is it has notification history. But if you're rocking an older version of Android or you're not rocking a Pixel, you don't have this. And so if you want something similar to this, you should check out an app called Pinit. 
So this is my go-to notification manager to pin, search, schedule, and even annotate alerts. You can search through all your notifications and even apply filters to specifically find ones you're looking for. And you can set up scheduled timed reminders so it will even push a notification out at a later date for you. And you can even turn on and off any app that you don't wanna show up in here. So when switching over to the Pixel 10, one of the main things that Google were hyping up was the video capabilities on this phone. And it is pretty good, but for me, it is just slightly over-processed. And so I prefer just to have more manual control. The Pixel app's great, but you know, it just doesn't give you much in terms of video control. And so an app I immediately downloaded was the Blackmagic camera app. One thing that would have been nice is if this phone had log and it still doesn't have log in Blackmagic, but it just gives you that extra control. So inside of here, you can manually set your lens, your frame rate, shutter speed, ISO, you can also go ahead and manually set your white balance as well as your tint. And there's some really good stabilization in here. There's also the ability to add a custom LUT so you can apply it on your video directly. Personally, as a videographer, it's just a nice app to have if you just wanna be a little bit extra with how you capture video on a smartphone. One problem I mentioned earlier was that if you're a Mac user and you have an Android phone, you're losing some of that functionality you would have if you had an iPhone. And so KDE Connect actually brings some of that back. So you can go ahead and transfer files and even sync your clipboard up so you can copy a link on your Pixel and paste it right on your Mac. You can also receive and reply to phone notifications on your desktop and even use your phone as a touchpad to control your computer. There's even a plugin section where you can enable more things in here. So there's a battery port where it will actually report battery status between devices. There's even find my phone and just a bunch more in here. So it's definitely worth checking out and it's completely free. Next up on the list, we have disk info. This is a lightweight tool for exploring your device's storage partitions and system info. So inside of here, you can view all of your information about your system partitions for storage and also your RAM. It's pretty simple, but you can change the units. It also has material U theming, so it will actually copy your device's color scheme. But overall, a simple but really useful app. And number 10 is Notebook LM. So this is an app made by Google and it uses AI to basically do a bunch of research for you. It's actually really cool. So you can throw a bunch of sources at it and it will go away and research the topic for all the sources you've given it. And it will actually create a report, but it also creates a podcast like voiceover explaining all of the topics and actually having a full in-depth discussion between two different people. Hey there, and welcome back to the deep dive. Great to be here. If you're like me and you learn a lot from podcasts, this is really good because you don't have to just read it. You can actually go ahead and listen to it. Something crazy, there's even now a join button and you can actually interact and talk with the people and actually have a discussion about the topic and ask questions. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's my 10 Android apps for September of 2025 on the Pixel 10 Pro. It's definitely a new experience for me using a non-XL smaller phone. Battery life hasn't been as good, but the overall usability has been amazing. I absolutely love just being able to reach all four corners of my screen and just having something slightly smaller is way more comfortable even in the pocket and just when it comes to daily use. Also that smaller screen is just not as nice for watching like YouTube videos and movies. So I tend to reach more for my iPad or my laptop, but this is definitely a beautiful phone. Like it feels premium in the hand, looks like a piece of jewelry. And if you're looking for more information, if you wanna come along with me and watch the Air Show here in Toronto on my day in the life, that will be coming out in the next few days from this video. So stay tuned for that, subscribe down below and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.